Welcome to this look at the new PIG system, a standalone feeder to finish operation on Seasons 19 on console with me, Mr. Sealy P. Right, in this video, we are going to be looking at the feeder to finish setup. This is different to part one and two. If this is the first one you're watching, I've done part one and part two of the Faro to finish process right the way through. That setup assumes that one farmer is going to do the whole process, but I did split it into two videos. So it does go farrow to feeder, then feeder to finish. But the feeder to finish in that video in part two is under the assumption that you are running right the way through, one farmer is doing the whole setup. So your cells have given birth to piglets, those piglets go up to the point where you would sell them at feeder, but then you take them right the way on to finish when you would sell them as a, a finished product, so to speak. Um, a feeder to finish setup is different. It's different because you don't have sows, you don't have females that are giving birth to piglets. You are just buying the feeders. You're buying them in. So you're buying piglets in to fatten up and to sell. There are pros and cons to doing this. Um, the pros being that you don't have to have sows, you haven't got to have breeding animals. You are just literally bringing in pigs, fattening them up, selling them on. The downside is, with a farrow to finish system um, your initial stock of breeding animals will give you new piglets those new piglets have cost you nothing all you've paid for is your breeding animals so every animal you have over the top of that is in addition to the downside with this being that because you've got to buy these in that is your purchase cost you've got a purchase cost added on whereas on the other system all of the piglets are kind of yours anyway in addition to the animals you already had um there are pros and cons to both um this should require less feed however i have found that if you watch part one and two that doing the breeding setup and running right the way through you get so many piglets i mean hundreds of piglets um doing it this way you've got to buy those hundreds of piglets in um so they're kind of the two differences we're starting with piglets that you buy so what we'll do we'll have a look in here at the options available our piglets are the gloucestershire old spot which are all males and the berkshires berkshires which are also all males the gloucestershire old spot are a slower growing animal but they are cheaper to buy 234 each to buy the berkshires um, are a faster growing animal but they are more expensive they're 324 to buy in still cheaper than buying your breeding animals but we're buying piglets they're 0 0.2 years old and they're in that range between that 30 and 60 pound for feeders so we've got the uh, gloss roll spots at 53 pounds in weight and the Berkshires at 57 pounds in weight um, what I'm going to do is run these through from feeder to finish as if we're just running this as a feeder to finish setup we're not doing the whole system just this end part of it and this is our our farm setup now i've changed it slightly i had all of them before on the previous two videos all stretching out that way what i'm doing is two control pens i'm doing two test pens there are lots of things we can test i actually have got a further one down number five i've just remembered um this first one I'm going to feed them pig food. It's just easier for, to see them fatten and at what point they fatten up, at what point they get to the most productive and most valuable. So pig food's the easiest route to go for me doing this. Pig food costs money, so if you want to do it with crops, you can. If you haven't watched part one and two, um, you will also uh, find that the um, pigs now don't take root crops. They don't take potatoes or sugar beet. Um, you only need um, corn, wheat or barley, sunflower canola or soybean you don't need um, any root crops so like i say i'm doing it with pig food just for ease of use so this one is going to have pig feed so all of the feed types it's going to have water and they're going to have straw in this one over here so they're my gloucester old spots in this one over here i've got my barkshires i've got 20 of each same these are going to have pig food they've got straw they're going to have water the two pens next to them I've also got 20 Berkshires, 20 Gloucestershire Old Spots. They're going to be fed pig food, but I'm not giving them straw. I'm curious to see how their health is going to be affected by not having straw and whether they will grow at a slower rate than the ones that do have straw. So that's the first test. They're going to be the two test pens. This one down here is a bit of a random test. 
because there are so many permutations of what we can do here with regard to feed, what combinations of feed you could give them, if you don't go down the pig food route, um, if I just open up this menu here and we go to our animals, um, let's go up to the enclosure. You could give them corn only, you could give them wheat only, you could give them soybean only, you could give them corn and wheat but no soybean or canola or whichever, you could give them soybean or canola and wheat but no corn. So the point I'm making, there are so many different ways you could feed them that could give you different results. You may need to do a bit of testing. In this one, what I'm going to do is just feed them corn. I'm not going to give them um, pig food, I'm not going to fill up those other two, and again, I want to see how it affects them. Now I have got a split of 10 and 10 in this one, I've got 10 Berkshires and 10 Gloucestershire Old Spots in this one. I'm just curious to see if they only have corn, again, will they grow slower, will it make a difference? If it doesn't make a difference, then why feed them pig food? You can just do loads of corn and, you know, but like I say, there are other permutations that you can run. Uh, now, again, if you haven't seen any of my other um, animal kind of guide to tutorials on seasons, what we have got with seasons, and this only comes with seasons, is the water pump. I uh, know if you've watched them all before, you, it's a bit repetitive, I apologise, but if you're new and this is the first one you're watching, you need to know this. Um, the water pump can be placed and it will put water in your troughs. It won't fill the trough, but it will make sure that trough never runs out of water for your animals. I've put them at all the other ones. Oh, actually, I don't think I've done that one down there, but I'll do that in a second. Um, so what I'm going to do is just show you, just so you know, you know where it is and how to find it. And like I say, I will stress this again, this is only available in Seasons. This is not a mod that's available separately. Um, it, this only comes if you've got Seasons on and Seasons installed. So. If we go into our menu, we go to placeables, animal pens, and go right the way to the end. There's our water pump. What you need to do is place it. Oh, I did put one there. That one, that's all right. We're all good. So this is the only one I haven't done yet. So you need to come to your water trough. You want to place it as close to as you can, and it be in the green. That's probably all right, actually. Some people are placing them inside the pens and still getting away with it. Um, you know, some people, if you've got a pen that's got an indoor trough, some people are managing to get them in the doorway and it still work. It'll be a bit of filling around. What should happen then is when you've placed it and you come back out, in that it says water and it says water pump in brackets. If you haven't got a water pump, it will just say water. So if it hasn't registered, it won't say water pump. If it does say water pump, then it should put the water in almost straight away sometimes it takes a little while to scroll over and you'll get your water pump so that water will continually go in so their health interestingly enough the health starts at 80 percent i'm baffled at the moment because with every other every other animal type i've done you put everything in start them off and they're at 80 percent health both of my pens with my barkshas in are 80 percent health my pen that's got the mixed that only has corn is at 77 percent health weirdly my gloucestershire old spots without straw are at 80 percent my gloucestershire old spots with straw are at 68 percent why is that why is that drop so low why all of a sudden are they so low Ah, no. That's because of the water, isn't it? Because I waited. Because I waited to show putting in the water pump, they didn't have water at the start. So all the animals have had water only for a few minutes, literally while I've been setting this up. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that's different between this and all the rest of them, was I waited to put the water pump in. And that's dropped their health right down to 68%. I hope that recovers, because that could skew things a little bit here. But anyway, fingers crossed we'll be okay with that. So we're in a position now where I've got all my pens set up, they've got feed in, they've got water, they've got straw. Um, the two that haven't got straw, they're fine. The one down the bottom that's only got corn, that's all good to go. What we're going to do now is head through to late spring. Now technically, feeder to finish should take four months. If you do it on the farrow to finish system, um, they're born after about four months. Uh, they get to feeder stage in another two, which takes you to six months, and then to finish takes you up to about ten months. So in theory, feeder to finish should be four months. That's what we're going to be looking at. So feeder to finish should be four months. We'll see what they're worth, see how much money we've made on them. I personally, hand on heart at the moment, think doing a farrow to finish system 
it's more profitable personally that's just you know depends how you want to go with it um so off we go i'll see you in a minute Okay, I am running three-day seasons just because it's easier on console to get through you know, each month. Otherwise, I've got to go day after day after day. I can't speed it up past 120. It takes quite a while. Um, which means that every game day that passes is actually a month on seasons. So we're a month ahead. We're in late spring. Um, there have been some changes. Unfortunately, because I had that little bit of a blip with the um, the water pump here with the Gloucester's roll spots means that these ones are playing catch up at the moment we can see a big difference we'll have a look at the Berkshires in a minute but what I did do was before it got too dark yesterday a month ago I added more feed in because I knew they were going to put on weight um, and the ones that I did on the previous videos put on weight rapidly I mean really quickly um, and they were getting through their feed very very quickly so I added some more feed in but I'm getting some weird anomalies with these um, cleanliness on all of the troughs is 100% they've made no mess at all they've barely touched their feed either they really haven't used very much compared to when I did it with the other breeds um, so that's something that's definitely different and it's really interesting how that's panned out if we look at our Berkshires then, and we look at those as as our kind of test ones at the moment until our um, Gloucester Stroll spots get a chance to catch up. But our control pen that's got straw in and all the feed, they've gone up from 80% to 85% health. Their weight has gone up from 57 pounds to 106 pounds. So they're putting on weight really well, which is great. Um, the test pen that doesn't have any straw in, they're only 82% health, not 85. Their weight isn't 106, it's 105, which isn't a huge difference at all at the moment. I don't know if that divide's going to get bigger, maybe it will. But at the moment, it's not having too much of an impact. And it definitely seems to be that the Berkshires, and it does say that they are a faster growing breed, are growing faster, definitely. If I come down to our um, Gloucestershire Old Spots, that don't have straw they're at 82% health which kind of matches up with the 82% health from the Berkshires without straw um, but their weight's only 98 pounds so they haven't gone over the 100 pound mark yet so they are definitely growing slower than the Berkshires the Gloucestershire put spots are a slower growing breed and this is my anomaly at the moment because of the water situation at the start and they dropped right the way down on their health they're catching up they're at 77% health but their weight's only at 94, so at the moment that's a bit of a blip. I can't. Hopefully, it's going to catch up. The interesting one for me is the test, the double test, the one that's only got corn, and I've got a split between Berkshire and Gloucestershire old spots. Their health is only at 60%. Now, bearing in mind the Berkshires in my other pens are at 106 and 105 pounds, these are only at 93 in the same time period. So because their health is lower, because they're not getting all of the crop types, they're only getting corn. They've got straw, just like the other ones have, but they're only getting corn. Their health is really suffering for it, and their weight gain is suffering for it. Admittedly, if you're going to run these you know, month after month after month, they will catch up and they will get to a point where they're at the, when you want to sell them, but you want to get them to that point as quickly as you possibly can. Um, so it is having an impact. Only giving them corn is causing them health issues and it's causing their weight gain to be a lot less than their counterparts in the other ones of 106 and 105 pounds in weight not a colossal difference but i'm assuming that gap is going to increase fairly dramatically um so what we're going to do feed them again um i'm going to take a chance and not feed them before i skip through the night today like I say, on, on parts one and two, I found that as the animals were gaining weight and gaining weight rapidly, they were getting through the food at such a rate. These ones just don't seem to be. So that that's a big difference between the two. From doing farrow to finish using the standard animals, I say standard animals if you want to call them standard, um, and doing feeder to finish with the piglet varieties seems to be a huge difference in feed consumption. Um, but anyway, we'll see. Right, I'm on month two, it's early summer, they are continuing to put on weight. Um, the animals down here that only have corn are 
at a deficit. They've stayed at 60% health, they haven't increased on that. The weight gain for the Gloucestershire Old Spots has gone from 87 pounds to 124. The Berkshires have gone from 93 to 132, which seems quite good, but compared to their counterparts in the other um, pens, they're way off the pace. So, I mean, th this test will continue, but I think we're already seeing that the health and what they're being fed, which obviously you know, it gauges what their health is, um, is having an effect on their weight gain. If you want to get to that weight as soon as possible, they need to be as healthy as possible with the best feed as, as possible. That's just the way it's going to be. Um, the magic weight is 280 pounds. That's what real realists say um, a finished animal should be at. You can probably go beyond that, and I may well skip a couple of months ahead just to see when we get to the finish point of 280 pounds or around 280 pounds in weight. Um, if we go beyond that much heavier, do they continue to gain weight and value, or does that drop off at some point? Um, so that's what we're going to be looking at. The other thing as well, worth pointing out, and it's kind of obvious, but I'll, I'll not point out now anyway. These are all males. What you buy, what you put in here, is what you're going to finish with. You're not going to get any more animals. There's no way. A feeder's finish operation like this, where you're buying the feeders in, you're buying in all males. Um, if you do it the other way, if you decided you were going to do um, farrow to feeder and then move your feeders into a one, like I did on part one and part two, you're moving a mix of females and males, so you have got animals that will breed there. But these won't. They're just they're all males. They're not going. I mean, I know it's an obvious thing to say, but it's worth pointing out. So, in our menu, our Berkshires, um, they are all eating more food now, so the troughs are going down, which is great. Now, Berkshires, um, our control are at 89% health, um, up from 85. They're at 162 pound in weight, up from 106, so they're putting on weight. Um, the Berkshires without straw are only 84% health, and their weight's 158 pounds. So whereas the last month there were only a pound difference between them, now it's four, is it? Yeah, about four pound difference. Again, it doesn't it's not a lot, but that gap seems to be increasing as we go. Uh, the pig enclosure, as we just said, that's got the mixed in 124 pounds to 132 pounds between the... Uh, between the Gloucester Old Spots and the Berkshires. Um, oh, this menu's driving me mad. There we go. Um, which is fine. And obviously I've still got this anomaly with the with the Gloucester Old Spots. Um, the ones with straw should be at a better point than the ones without straw, but obviously because of that little gaff at the start, although they are catching up. The ones without straw are at 84% health. The ones with straw that had quite a deficit at the start, they're back up to 83, so they're gonna go past at some point. Um, and again, what we're seeing is that the uh, Gloucestershire Old Spots are gaining weight, but nowhere near as fast as the um, as the Berkshires. Uh, they're at 149 pounds for the ones without straw. The ones with straw, only 143, but again, because they had that health deficit. So we are seeing that, that health is making a huge difference you know you make a, a small error somewhere forget to fill something up something runs out water you know, whatever it might be if you don't go with water pumps um you can have problems you, you absolutely can so uh yeah what i'm going to do now is probably skip ahead two months to a point where we should be at feeder well not feeder finish so that should be the point they're at where we're ready to sell they should be around the 280 pound mark i want to jump to that one and see where we stand with all of them and then I want to try and jump ahead a couple of months from that to see where we'd be if we keep hold of them beyond what would be considered the finish point and can we make more money by hanging on to them a little bit longer, potentially. Um, so I'm going to feed them. I'm going to clean them out. I think I've already cleaned them out. Yeah, whichever. I don't want to feed them, clean them, put a straw in and um, I will see you probably then in late summer. Okay, we are five months in. Interestingly, at four months, four game days for me, the animals weren't at 280 pounds they hadn't reached that point yet so i've had to go another month forward to get into that bracket um whereas when i did it with the um uh, the yorkshires and the spotted doing them from farrow to finish the piglets from the yorkshires and the spotted got to the right weight in four months so something to bear in mind something to think about you know option or not um, as far as we go with our weights and measures um, our Berkshires with straw 96% health they're at 312 pounds in weight 
so they're well past the 280 were okay but in the last month they were 260 something they were below they weren't at 280 yet so i had to go forward again uh, the Berkshires without straw are at £297 in weight, 88% health. A little bit lower on the health, a little bit smaller, but they are above the £280 as well. Not massively different, 312 297 I mean, it's not it's £15 in weight. It's not a massive amount, considering they've had no straw at all. Um, so, again, something to worth, worth thinking about. Um, our... Um, Gloucestershire, Gloucestershire old spots with straw are catching up with the health but because they spent so long at a deficit they are still lighter than the ones without straw like I say that unfortunately that anomaly is going to stay but they are they are above 280 pounds so technically they are in that point they're at a finish you can sell these off now if you want to um, the ones without straw are at 290 pounds so yeah the ones with straw are catching up again now the ones that had straw but only corn are still only at 60% uh, health they haven't got any higher up um, and they're struggling they're, they they are way below they're going to take another month at least to get up to the 280 pound mark so having their health low and not feeding them the proper feed or enough feed or enough types of feed whatever it might be they're going to take much longer to get to the finish point than if you feed them either pig food or you know something in each of those columns so again something to bear in mind if you know if you think well i'll just get away just only feeding them one thing you can it's just going to take a lot longer to get to where you need to be that's all um so let's have a look at prices then shall we for our gloucestershire old spots here let's go across uh, bear in mind we bought these and this is the thing as well the difference between doing it this way and doing it from farrow like i say from farrow all the piglets are in addition to your initial purchased animals so they are in effect free i know you've got to pay for feed and all that kind of stuff but they are a free animal these ones the gloucestershire old spots all cost me 234 so whilst the 289 pound ones are all worth 546 if you take off the 234 that i paid for them initially i'm only making 200 and, well not a lot is it 200 and, no it's gonna be 300 isn't it 300 and something per animal which doesn't seem like a lot when i did the um farrow to finish again using the yorkshires and using the spotted at this point each of the new piglets was worth between 575 and 663 each piglet and they were free they were in addition to so i don't know if doing it this way is the most cost effective you know i think doing it farrow to finish is the better way yes there's more feed and you know when you start breaking it all down into you know there are lots of other elements to take into account but just looking at it price wise for the for the animals themselves um, so let's have a look at the Barkshires. Now the Barkshires are more expensive to buy in the first place. I'm assuming they're going to be worth more now, but you've got to take off the fact that... Okay, that's not too bad, I guess. The Barkshires, uh, £312, are worth £700 each, and they cost us £324 to start off with. So we're looking at 375 each. So potentially... If you're going to go down this route, the Berkshires are worth more. They seem to be worth more at this point than the Gloucestershire old spots. Um, so, yeah, £700 each. That's not too bad. But like I say, yeah, 324 each we paid for them. So, you take that off. That's not too bad at all. Um, what I'm going to do now... We've already seen that the ones that are in the other two, our test ones here, are lighter animals anyway. Um, so they're going to be worth something but not worth as much because they've had no straw so yeah 547 and then what are these ones worth 674 not a huge amount of difference in all honesty considering they've had no straw right from the word go there's not a massive difference in it but if you're trying to make every penny count and you've got straw as a byproduct from doing wheat or barley or oats or whatever um then why not use it you might as well give them the bedding if you've got it if you've got to go and buy it then yeah you know that becomes a little bit of a moot point so 
again. Let's head on. I'm going to go a couple of months ahead and see if they have they should all have put more weight on and they should be worth more. This is the point that Realismus suggests you get rid of your finished animals at around £280. And that's where we are roughly now. Um, so let's see what they're worth in a couple of months and whether it's worth keeping hold of them for longer. It's late autumn. I'm seven months into the process. And now would be the perfect time to highlight the economy page. <laughs> now, the animals have definitely slowed in their growth. Across the board, they've slowed, slowed in their growth. I can draw some conclusions, but there will be some extrapolation needed kind of moving forward. Um, the price we were looking at at five months old has dropped this it's lower than it was at five months old even though they've put weight on the reason for that is this the economy page if you look at the gloucestershire old spot and look at the berkshire we are at the lowest point of the year it would happen to be now wouldn't it seven months on so this is the consumer advice you need to think about bearing in mind it took five months to get them where they needed to be to 280 pounds and potentially another month on to get them a little bit bigger you're better off buying them now you know it, obviously because i had seasons i was at a certain point to get to this point now i would have had to skip through day after day, after day. It would have taken me hours just to get to this point before i even started so i just bought them where i was um so realistically buy them now late autumn they're the cheapest they're going to be run through their cycle you'll get through to mid spring then sell them late spring when they're at their absolute worth the most now the thing about it is at the moment as far as weights go um let's have a look our berkshires with straw are at 336 pounds so they've slowed right down but, you know two months ago they were at 312 pounds so they haven't really put on a huge amount of weight they're at 98 percent health the ones without straw are at 320 pounds again not that far behind in weight they're only at 89 percent health um our Gloucestershire old spots um, with uh, straw are at 320, uh, 312 pounds in weight, so they are definitely behind the Berkshires. Th this one, the health is up to 96% now, so it's, it's gone past the other one, which is great. The ones without straw, my Gloucestershire old spots, are also 312 pounds in weight, although their health now is only sitting at 89%. So the ones with straw are, are still a little bit behind weight wise simply because of the problems we had earlier on. The ones that really is worth considering now is, is looking at the ones that didn't have um, all the food sources, just had corn. We are seven months in. Neither the Gloucestershire Old Spots or the Berkshires are even close to being at £280 yet. Seven months on, they're not there. To get them to £280, you're going to have to keep plugging away and plugging away and plugging away. The food they have and the amount of food is crucial. It's crucial to reach them where they need to be as soon as you can. Um, that's the one conclusion we can absolutely draw. Bang, draw a line on that, happy with that. You need to get them as healthy as possible by feeding them everything, um, you know. Now, the thing I kind of didn't mention earlier, which is the obvious thing, if you give them straw, you get manure. If you don't give them the straw, you get slurry. I've mentioned it on the other animal ones. I, I don't think I mentioned it earlier on in this. So what we've got to do now then is look at prices. And like I say, because we're in a slump now, we're at the lowest point we've been at the whole time. These are only at 521 now. So they've actually dropped in price to when we looked at them at month five because we're at that lowest point in the economy for the Gloucestershire old spots. Um, they're the heaviest they've been, but yeah, they're um, not worth as much. Even if you go through to when they're most expensive, I still think you're only going to be looking at maybe 700, maybe not even that. So for the for what you've got to do and the fact you've got to be a lot more precise about when you buy them and sell them compared to doing it farrow to finish on parts one and two, I honestly think doing it the other way is better. That's, I mean, that's just a personal opinion. You might just want to do feeder to finish. My Berkshires, again, these were sent at 700. Um, they're now 336 pounds in weight and they're only worth 665 now again these will go up and, and they'll probably go I would say in excess of maybe 900 on these when they get to the highest point the thing about it is if we go and look at the this menu again um, that would mean for me to show it I mean I could go two months on till we get to midwinter because they're worth a lot there as well 
to see what kind of price we get but it's, it's going to take me ages to skip forward um i might do i might have a moment of madness and just very quickly at the end just say look this is what they were worth at this point maybe um oh i've waffled on again for ages haven't i but you know it works and, and you can make money i just don't think the fact you've got to buy these in the first place you offset that cost I think you're better off doing it with the Yorkshires and the Spotted, in all honesty. Um, but that that's how you do it. At five months, you, you're gonna you're, you're ready to sell them. You can go further on. They'll get heavier in weight, and they'll be worth more. Um, oh, I am going to do it. You know what? I will be very quick on the last bit. I absolutely promise. We will just look at the prices and say, look, this is the weight they are now. This is what they're worth now. Um, Midwinter is going to be about when they're going to be worth the most other than what was it other than late spring so yeah let's skip to ahead and let's see what they can what we can actually make out of them what did i say i reckon about 700 and about 900 didn't i something like that maybe we'll see right i've done it it's midwinter um we are according to the economy page at the second highest point we're going to be out for the Glossus Rolled Spots and the Berkshires. So, Glossus Rolled Spots have put on weight. They're up to £335 in weight. They're only worth 652 I said about 700 so I was a little bit off. Um, 652 take away our cost of buying them, which was 234 Each one, we will make 418 Like I say, it doesn't take into account feed and, and machinery and repair and that kind of thing. It's literally just the, the animal. Um... If we look at our Berkshires, I think the price at five months was 700. 828, I said it might be 900. Again, I'm off a bit. Um, 828, take off the 324 for each one we bought, brings a total of 504 per animal. And that's almost at the highest point in the year as far as economy goes. Now the thing about that being, doing farrow to finish, with breeders i think one of the best prices i got on episode two or part two of that was 663 per animal so that's actually better than both of these um like i said it's just this is just to show you what's available what can be done uh the animals that didn't have any straw at all the berkshires 793 793 compared to 828 not a massive amount in it between the two. Uh, like I say, if you've got a straw, chuck it in. Why not? It's a bit of extra money. But if you haven't got it, it's not the end of the world if you haven't got it. Um, obviously, my uh, Glossus Rolled spots are still off a little bit because they were lagging behind from before. But the ones without straw, I'll send the 648. The others were 652. So that's that's a bit skewed. That's not quite right. Um, but the ones that are the possibly the most I say, disappointing is the wrong way of putting it, but... If we look at our pig enclosure that had just corn, they still haven't reached £280. The Glossus Rolled Spots and the Berkshires, 250 and 257 in weight. Um, we are nine months in and they still haven't reached that magic £280 mark where you need to be at for finishing pigs. So there you go. I mean, I take from this what you will. There's a whole load of information. I'm sure there's roughs more that I haven't covered and I've missed and I'm sure... The economics of it will be uh, pulled to pieces. However, at least it shows you what you can do, how you can do it. Um, oh, yeah, the last thing I will say is when you buy them and when you sell them, do not do them from here. Get yourself a transport vehicle because for each animal you buy and for each animal you sell, there's a £100, euro or dollar charge per animal. So you can then just take that off the total or add it to the total at the start. Whichever way around you look at it, you're worse off. So you're better off getting a trailer. Um, and doing it by trailer and with that we have come to an end <laughs> of the feeder to finish setup i hope you found this useful and informative in some way shape or form if you have give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do thanks for watching <laughs>